Hi! I'm excited to start this video series entitled Opening Inwards. I'd like to tag you along so that you too can have a peek of your inner door if you haven't already. So, let's go! I just have one tiny request. I want you to experience these videos not with your physical senses, but with an open mind and heart. Please suspend your judgment and listen with your soul. Thank you. Admittedly, I'm a functioning introvert. During the social distancing times, I'm literally in my element. I've always enjoyed my own company, so naturally, with too much alone time, I started having continuous conversations in my head. After listening for several days to the endless chatter and sometimes even petty squabbles going on inside my head, I began to start social distancing myself from these neurotic conversations. I started to look forward to my quiet prayer and meditation times as I could escape from the rubbish perpetual chatter going on inside my mind. After several days of meditation, I realized that I was having this wonderful, profound, and meaningful, silent conversations with a spiritual being residing deep within me that had far more love, wisdom, and depth. Then I wondered, why on earth that all my life I've been listening and participating with my lower intellect whose dialogues were filled with fear, gossip, judgment, anger, and drama when all along I could have listened to this loving, joyful, and peaceful, and quiet conversations instead. I have gone through bankruptcy, separation and divorce, investigations and lawsuits, life-threatening accident, and single parenthood. But through all this, I never consulted my inner being during and after. Life had been teaching me its precious lessons, but I was tone deaf. Instead, I used my lower intellect to survive, solve the problems, and get out of the sticky situations. One time, the spirit inside of me was so compelling urging me to get out of harm's way, but I ignored it as always. Complacently, I confided to my sister, you know, I can see the writings on the wall, but I think I still have time. I didn't. Things just started collapsing over my head and I was trapped right smack in the middle of a mayhem. My older sister, who is blessed abundantly with wealth, joy, and happiness, is the exact opposite. She has honed her intuition and her inner voice so well, she follows this voice even if at times it has no logic. When we were growing up, she influenced my spiritual side. I had no choice. She's my big sister and I always tagged along for the ride. One time, she convinced me to go down the abyss, literally, where several informal settlers lived, to give away a significant portion of our wardrobe. As soon as we got back home, our mother decorated our bodies with red marks from her painful pinches. Our parents had worked hard to get those clothes for us. In our teens, during Christmas time, she persuaded me to buy gifts for everyone when all our older siblings already had families and children and we were the only ones still unmarried. Since we did this every Christmas, whether or not I had surplus money for my allowances, inwardly, I felt it was unfair that I was giving so much to their large families and receiving very little as I was single. As we got married and had our own families, we parted ways, and I reverted back to my old selfish and frugal ways, while she took her generosity and kindness 
to the next level. She helped hundreds of people in her community. She followed her inner spirit, telling her that love is giving and had nothing to do with what she receives. She lives her life in accordance to the dictates of her inner being. Hence, she is blessed with abundance, while I, well, that is what I'm working on. I feel that the universe is preparing me so that my personality will be ready to accept grace and multiply the abundance that will be bestowed on me and most importantly, generously share and give to others without expectations. The amazing thing with this newly found inner awakening is that it is manifesting itself to my outer everyday world. Before this, when I was jogging, I would avoid eye contact and would look down to pretend that I did not see the person coming my way. I didn't want to be involved in greetings and small talks. Nowadays, I find myself smiling way ahead of time and greeting each person I met, whether or not they acknowledged me. I also have spring in my steps and for some reason, the clouds, mountains, trees and flowers seem to have sharper images. It's not like I've started wearing corrective lenses. It feels more like I have taken off that blurry, smudged, broken and heavily tinted glasses that have been covering my eyes all along. As my background is accounting, I consider myself as the raw material, surrendering myself to the guidance of my inner spirituality. I'm fully aware that the spirit is working in progress at my soul and someday I will become that loving, generous and beautiful finished product that I am meant to be. In conclusion, let's listen to the groanings of the Holy Spirit within us and let our intuitive self guide us. Let's not let our five senses dictate how we should live. We are, after all, primarily spiritual beings experiencing a physical life and not the other way around. As you think, so shall you be. The intuitive mind is a sacred gift and the rational mind is a faithful servant. We have created a society that honors the servant and has forgotten the gift. What about you? Have you looked inside yourself yet? What have you discovered so far? Isn't it an exciting journey? Do share your thoughts. So, at the end of this journey, if I have not achieved material abundance, what have I gained? What about joy, love, compassion, energy, generosity, and the secret to aging younger? Not bad! Although, really wouldn't mind material abundance as well. Hey, if you like this video, please like and subscribe to my channel, Aging Younger. Please comment on what resonates with you in this video and if you want me to cover other topics you're interested in. So, I'll see you next time!